What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so Janet Jackson has walked back her previous comments in regards to Kamala Harris's heritage. You may recall recently she did an interview and uh, I think it was an interview to BuzzFeed where the actual topic was about her ongoing tour, her Together Again tour, which will conclude next month. The interviewer shifted the conversation to the 2024 presidential election. And you can make an argument that the interviewer may have been setting Janet Jackson up for this, hoping that she say something controversial. But whatever, that's speculation on my part. So it was the interviewer that shifted the interview to the election. The interviewer, who was a woman, I'm assuming it may have been the black woman, but I'm not certain of that, said that this country can make history by electing its first black female president. To which Janet Jackson voiced that she had heard that Kamala was not really black, saying that she thought that her father was white and that uh, she wasn't really black, that she was Indian, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this caused a firestorm on social media. Uh, people publicly denounced her. Uh, you got D.L. Hughley now going at his, going at her, saying she can't sing and all this type stuff. Uh, it, it's funny, man. <laughs> the Democratic Party put these guys on their on their payroll, or Demo uh, or, or, or if not the Democratic Party. Um, different, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Different organizations that are affiliated with the Democratic Party will put these guys on the payroll and they just go complete bulldog for the Democratic Party. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's bullshit when people say, oh man, I don't believe in organizations or I don't, I don't, you know, follow organizations. Bullshit. Black people are the biggest and the most ardent defenders of the Democratic Party or the Democrats. Whatever you want to call them. That's bull. Yes, you are. The, the Democratic Party has no more loyal a people for the last 60 years than the Democratic Party, and you get nothing in return. Well, some people get trinkets, but you know, it's nothing to be proud of for the most part. Not us anyway. But anyway, through her manager, Mo El Masri, Jackson walked back her statement saying, quote, well, actually, she says, she deeply respects Harris's accomplishments as a black and Indian woman, making it clear that she's both and saying that she understands the importance of accurate representation of facts and public discourse. Now, I do believe that when you're in a public forum, you should be accurate, or at least strive to be accurate. But there are times when we say things that are not correct. Sometimes it's the source that we're using that's not correct. I do that sometimes when I'm wishing people happy birthday. They come to find out the source was wrong on their birthday was two days ago or last month. These things happen. Um, I think the difference should be, or the qualifier should be in these situations when you are going to go after somebody, is intent. I don't think Janet Jackson meant to be malicious when she said what she said, okay? But people were damn sure malicious going after her. After all that Janet Jackson and her family has contributed to music over the past 50 years, 50 plus years actually, for all of their efforts, for the past 55 years that the Jackson family uh, has put out there as far as music, yes, they've enriched themselves. But that's comes with the capitalistic society. People shouldn't have to be punished for being rich. That's BS. 
You know what I'm saying? Like every person that's black and they're rich, somehow they become the enemy of the black community. As if we embrace being poor. And if you become rich, then somehow that you lose authenticity as being black. I can't stand that. Yeah, there are people who sell themselves, sell out the black community for profit. But in this country, you cannot be Mr. Super Poor Black Militant and rich at the same time. It's just not going to happen. It's not. There are going to be times when you're going to have to bite your tongue and sometimes not speak out about certain things. Okay? It just That's just the reality. Or, you know what I'm saying, you just can't strive to be rich because even these rappers, you know, they're always quiet when it comes to talking about certain things. But that don't mean that you still can't do things outside of the press's scope and contribute to your community. But, you know, that's a whole other video for another day. Look, we can all get on here and talk about what should be done or whatever, but at the end of the day, there's a difference between talking and doing, right? Let me get to the point, though. Um, this still don't take away from the fact that we don't know Kamala Harris. I'm sorry. We don't know her. And part of the reason why Jan Jackson would fail victim to misinformation is because we don't know her because she won't go out there and clarify what the fuck she's about. She won't do it. She won't do it. Look, most vice presidents who've run for the presidency. Now, Joe Biden was a former vice president, but he didn't run in 2016 after Obama. But still, we all know who Joe Biden is. We know him. We know his record. Just trying to go back to vice presidents. Al Gore, when he ran in 2000, we knew Al Gore. We knew his record. He was visible in the Clinton administration. Bush, when he ran in 88, we knew George Bush. He had been in the public eye for decades. We knew of him. He was active in the Reagan administration, okay? Walter Mondale, when he ran 84, we knew him. We knew his record. He was active in the Carter administration. We don't know Kamala. Kamala Harris was an obscure senator. Yeah, you can say she was history-making as far as her ethnicity, but as far as her accomplishments and her being in the public eye politically, we don't know her. We didn't know her in 2019, which is partially why she got 8% of the vote in the California primary in 2020. When she was picked for VP, we didn't really know her. A lot of that was just anti-Trump sentiment that got Joe Biden into the White House. We don't really know her as, as VP because for most of the last three and a half years, outside of the border czar thing, she's been put on ice. We don't know this woman. Barack Obama, when he ran in 2008, we didn't really know Barack Obama either. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring back some memories here. We didn't know who Barack Obama was in 2007. If you remember, most black people still were back in the Clintons up until the South Carolina primary because we didn't know Barack Obama. They weren't trying to shove Barack Obama down our throats. We were looking at him, okay. You know, this is a smooth brother, good on the stump, good political skills, good ideas. Uh, is he real? Is he and also is he authentic? Now, we were, and I believe most of us will agree with this, disappointed with many of his actions or non-actions as president when it comes to black people. Oftentimes condescending afraid to tackle issues, whatever. But in 2007, 2008, we were getting to know him. We looked at his background, community organizer. He embraced his black heritage, identifies as a black man, beautiful black wife. I don't care what none of you ninjas say. Michelle Obama's a knockout in my eyes. Beautiful black family. 
yeah, in hindsight, it was messed up that he threw Farrakhan and Jeremiah right under the bus. But, you know, we gave him the benefit of the doubt. We were saying, like, look, man, politically he got to do certain things to get in. But we eventually got to know him. Plus, he went through the grind of going against the Clinton machine in all 50 states and the territories and came out on top. She's been handed everything. Nobody voted for her in his primaries. So they just get, push her out there sometime in July and said, hey, and vote for her because we tell you to. No. And then she won't say what she is in the debate. When asked about her ethnicity, she didn't even acknowledge the question, pass on. I don't want to answer that. Then she does all these tokenisms to speak to a black crowd. You better thank a union member. You put on a black cadence and eating, you know, grits and whatever the hell it was, greens and claiming she washed collars in the bathtub and dancing and shucking and jiving. Like that's supposed to, that's the most lowest common denominator crap that you can pull to try to get us to vote for you. But yet somehow something's wrong with me and others because we're not sold on her. And no, to the slow-witted ones in the back row, that doesn't mean we have to vote for Donald Trump. No, it doesn't mean we're Trump supporters, which are very narrow, atherosclerotic, clogged brain cells. Doesn't mean that. It just means we're not sold on her. And sorry, we fell for the banana in the tailpipe once before with Barack Obama. Nope. So part of this is Kamala's fault herself. Sorry, but it is. You know what I mean? Not to mention the fact that she's a cop who put a lot of black people in prison unjustly. Used truancy laws to terrorize women, in particular black women. But look who the biggest demographic supporting her. But it don't make any difference. Look, I've had female subscribers who love when I go in on LeBron James. But all of a sudden, they unsubscribe for me because I'm I'm, I'm criticizing Kamala. That, so they're showing their true colors, you know what I'm saying? Pun intended. But anyway, that's all I got to say on this one, man. Keep your head up, Jared Jackson. You know what I'm saying? They're bullying you. They're trying to bully you into submitting to what they want you to say. You know what I'm saying? I thought this is a country full of free speech. You know what I'm saying? A country where we're supposed to have free speech. You know, um, I remember it's, it's funny because when I was growing up, most of the people on the left always told me how people on the right always trying to control free speech. And that is true. A lot of them do. You know, the old shut up and dribble crowd. But don't act like the left is so embracing the free speech too, especially if it doesn't, if you what you're saying doesn't correlate or correspond with their agenda. You know, they can be just as vicious. Now, I have to say honestly, since the Clinton, excuse me, since the uh, Obamas left, remember they said when the when the opposition go low, we go high. Shit, that's out the window now. The left is even nastier than the right. But anyway, that's all I got to say about it. 